Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we are going to take a look at day six of Warhammer Fest Online, the final day, the last day, the mystery day. Although we have said a few times during the week that it feels like it might be Age of Sigmar 3.0, and that's exactly what it was. Obviously, kind of sad, kind of gutted that it was not a new Horus Heresy starter box. That would have been lovely, but it's Age of Sigmar instead. We did have a few predictions during the week, and this one always seemed like the most likely. But to be honest, I'm not too upset about that, because there are some, some quite nice models going on here. A couple of things they showed off with this. Not a huge amount revealed, as you might expect. It's more of a tease for upcoming things, new exciting things in the future. But still, there's some cool stuff to look at. So, first up... We have, well, it's the fact that it's Age of Sigmar, the next edition, and this is the cover art for the new book, which I have to say I absolutely love. That, there's some gnarly, nasty stuff going on there. It looks like a Stormcast falling into a pit of Chaos Spawn, endlessly respawning, constantly changing god-awful tentacle mouth flesh abyss going on there. It's really grim. And the Stormcast that is diving into it, I'm getting uh, I'm getting quite heavy sanguineous vibes from this. Now, I have already seen these models, and I have to say, I did see a few people ask why this particular character was not modelled the same way that she is on the cover art for the book. That is the pose that Sanguinius is in just about. I don't think they could have modelled this character that way, because then it would have looked even more like they'd made an Age of Sigmar version of Sanguinius than it already does. That's not a complaint, by the way, because I love this model, but I can see why they didn't go with this pose for the model itself. It's far too similar to something that already exists. Now, the basic gist of it is that uh, the, the ongoing story for Age of Sigmar is changing slightly, as it does. We've had the Broken Realm saga, massive stuff has happened, but the Soul Wars are over, the Curse of the Necroquake is broken, and waves of life magic are sweeping across the realms. There is some really nice artwork going on here as well. I really do like the, uh, the art they've done for this. So the narrative of the new edition sees the forces of order pushing out across the mortal realms to finally reclaim land lost since the Age of Chaos, establishing outpost cities and growing Sigmar's realm step by bloody step. All across Gur in particular, the forces of destruction are rising up in droves as their newly awoken god Kragnos begins a rampage of epic proportions. So it looks like the focus is going to be on Grand Alliance destruction this time around, which honestly makes me happy because there's there's a lot to be done with the uh, with the destruction range. Maybe more ogre stuff, that would be fun. Uh, but yeah, it, it's switching across hopefully to being a destruction focused side of things, which is which is cool because we've had at the start it was uh, the first edition. It was Stormcast versus Corn, essentially. So you had Order versus Chaos. And then it was Order versus Death, and now it's Order versus Destruction. I get the feeling Order is going to be one of the uh, the main players in every single one of these editions. But at this point, it is fair to consider that the Stormcast are the poster children of uh, of Age of Sigma, are much in the same way that Space Marines are the poster children of 40k. And so you'd expect to see them when it comes to new edition stuff. Now, the first model to look at is. Ndraster, the Celestial Spear. Indraster, Undraster, Endraster. Either way, she looks absolutely solid. Now, she's a beast slayer, beyond compare, apparently. Has been tasked with hunting down the most terrible monsters found in mortal realms, carried into battle upon angelic wings, and wielding the legendary spear Thengavar. Sure, her mere visage strikes terror into the enemies of Azir. What a... I love this. I love this. This is a solid model. First things first, because this is a recurring theme, right? This is relatively, and I say relatively because it is relative, relatively more clean than perhaps we're used to from from Age of Sigmar-like hero characters. Yes, she does have that big kind of crown thing. I don't really know what you would call that, that large kind of ornamental piece coming out of the back of the armor at the back of the neck there, which, by the way, is very reminiscent of uh, of, of, of Valdor, which is an interesting thing to see. Um, it feels like there's a bit of a bit of shared inspiration there. I think that's a fair a fair comment to make, but it fits on her, I would argue, a little bit better than him. He looks very cluttered, whereas this is this is relatively clean. Now, if you compare her to the Lord Celestin, there's there's a few interesting things going on in terms of armor and stuff. So with the Lord Celestin, you've got these kind of runes and and sigils inscribed in the armor across the knees, the shins, 
and the feet. The breastplate has got this kind of heavily stylized line thing going on. Even the belt is like a series of squares within squares going down the side. There's a very particular shape to the uh, to the the shoulders as well. There's a like again with the like the gauntlets and the van races and stuff. You've got that same kind of that same kind of carved look. Compare that to her, and actually her arm is pretty reasonable. Her armor actually looks relatively sensible and relatively functional compared to, say, that, which is very heavily stylized and over the top. Now, of course, she does have stylized stuff herself. She has got those kind of, um, like, wavy symbols coming off, almost like kind of rays from, from a sun kind of thing. She does have that going on, but that's like extras tacked onto the armor, not built into the armor itself. It's the same thing when you look at things like the just the Lord Celestine. With the Lord Celestine, you've got this huge lion chest piece. You've got engraved greaves and like you've got engraved stuff around the waist. The belt is really complicated with kind of symbols and a long piece of cloth down the center. Even the cape is split into individual strands with hammers on the end of each individual one. The sword has got carvings all the way down it. One shoulder ends in a massive, like a massive symbol. And then you look at her and yeah, one shoulder is a bit bigger than the other, but it doesn't come down all the way across her chest. It doesn't end in a gigantic symbol that's like bigger than her head. It actually looks reasonable. And I, I really, really like that. This honestly feels like a, like a, a grittier Stormcast. I think that's the only way to put it. This still has the trappings of something heroic, but it's not like, it's not deep in the realm of the only reason that this armor works is because it's magical kind of thing. Like, reasonably speaking, that is, that's like, it's so overblown. All the proportions are massive. It's so chunky. You can't help but feel that maneuverability would be borderline nothing in certain areas on this thing. I don't get that same sense from this. Now, I'm not saying at any point that this is, you know, oh, this is what real armor looks like. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that this, inherently to the amount of kind of ornamentation it's got actually attached to it, the relative slimness of it, it simply looks more reasonable. It looks more capable of doing what it is designed to do, to my eye anyway. It honestly feels like they've kind of dialed back how over the top the Stormcast are, kind of bringing it more towards the general direction of like Warhammer Fantasy as opposed to Age of Sigma. It feels like it's taken a slightly, a slightly less over the top fantastical turn with this. Now of course I'm saying all that talking about a character that has got actual wings, but again this is a character that's got actual wings. The symbology of this is, is very different, like the approach to this is very different. This is just a straight up angelic figure in heavy armour. We have a template for this sort of thing. When you see, you know, feathered wings on a person, the default response is to think angel of some degree. When you have something that's that over the top and that stylized, that kind of becomes a little bit blurred and it takes on a slightly different nature, to me anyway. This just feels... I don't know, a little bit more gritty in a way? And I I really, really like this. I think this is a really nice model. Got a bit more detail there for the like the weapons and the back of the wings as well. Something that is genuinely interesting to me is the fact that these weapons look way more like like brutal than than your, your normal Stormcast stuff. I mean, again, if you look at that sword, you've got all these carvings and stuff on it. It's, it's quite clean, but it kind of looks inherently magical by the nature of the blade and the fact it's got all these words kind of embossed into it. The hammer is relatively simple, but you've just got like a straight flat head. There's not much in the way of ornamentation on that one necessarily, especially compared to the sword. But then if you compare those two and like compare compare some of the stuff on uh, on this lad here, That is, that's like quite a, almost quite a noble hammer in as much as you can have a noble war hammer. But it looks, it looks like something wielded by like a righteous warrior. I would suggest that that spear and that sword don't have that same aesthetic at all. They're similar, but with the spear you've got this like spiked metal 
kind of cudgel section almost. The actual blade of the spear is relatively clean. There's not a huge amount going on with it. It's not covered in carvings or details. Same with the sword. These feel like these feel darker in their design than a lot of the uh, a lot of the existing Stormcast Eternal weapons to me. It's similar overall, but a lot of the little details just feel a bit closer to a bit closer to the dark end of the spectrum. Whereas I think previously Stormcast have always looked a lot more kind of extremely over the top. I think it's reasonable to say that if you saw that spear and that sword in the hands of a Chaos model, you wouldn't think anything of it. You wouldn't bat an eyelid. You wouldn't be like, oh, those don't fit. Those are clearly from something else. I don't think you could get away with that with most of the Stormcast weapons as they are. But these specifically, these two, they feel like they would fit in a Chaos army. The base is extremely over the top. It's it's very uh, <laughs> it's very prominent. Interesting though that it's kind of looked like swampy and boggy. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But yeah, it's maybe a bit over the top. I get the feeling looking at it. It's a little hard to tell, and of course we'd need to see the uh, the sprues to know for sure. I feel like probably the model isn't necessarily. Like, I don't think she is fully attached to, like, that bit of stair and wall. I think maybe you could get away with putting her on something else without necessarily having to hack anything apart. It's a little difficult to tell. But with a little bit of determination, I don't think it would be too difficult to base her in a in a different fashion if you really wanted to. Where the cloak meets that branch, that looks like it could be a bit of a pain to deal with, but... I think it would probably be doable if you really wanted to. I suppose technically it is a uh, it is a, uh, a special rock, but it's a very big, very specific set of special rocks. Now it's not just her, there is also the reforged Stormcast Eternals. So in the face of the upheaval across the mortal realms, Sigmar's warriors must adapt in their effort to establish new bastions of order made of stronger of mind and body, clad in Thunderstrike armour of ingenious design and wielding potent blessed weapons, new reinforcements are ready to take the fight to the enemy. Again, this is this is like really interesting to me, because this is a like sleeker, slimmer version of Stormcast Eternals that, again, are somewhat lacking in that same over-the-top fantastical approach. This looks... I'm not... I'm not like an armorer or something by trade. I'm not an expert in in like in actual full-on suits of armor. But to the layman, to me, someone who is not like completely knowledgeable about such things, that guy there, that vindictor, looks more real than them. They are massive and chunky. Like they've got serious width. The kind of abundance of cloth and tassels, the shape of the shoulders as well. Even the heads are quite wide, where you've got that kind of halo over the top of them. They don't look quite as... Well, they don't look quite as real as a thing that could exist as that does. To me, again, a lot of that extra weight, a lot of that extra chunk has been taken out. The armour seems to be made a little bit... Just that little bit simpler... You're lacking the kind of cloth and the tabards and the like, and instead it's just replaced with like scale mail instead. It feels like they've made a distinct effort to make these, again, look a bit closer to just being armour. And I have to wonder, genuinely, whether part of that is down to the amount of comments of like, like, like calling them Sigmarines, like, oh, well, we've got Space Marines in, in fantasy now. Whether this is a determined effort to make them look a bit less like that and to make them look that little bit more real? Not that it's necessarily going to work, because I've already seen people saying that these are like Primaris <laughs> Sigmarines. It's it's super interesting to me that they've decided to make the changes to this design. Again, again with the spears, you've got that kind of hefty metal section with the spikes kind of poking out. It's like they took something like that and went, okay, we need to tone it down. We need to make it more reasonable, less stylized. Keep some of the same design cues in, so you've still got the blade kind of going down into the hilt with the uh, the gold spreading part way up. You've still got like a little bit of a little bit of a symbol, but it's just way more subtle on this. And I'd definitely say that I think the shield looks better. 
I really think that shield looks looks better than the uh, the existing ones. It's just more interesting. The shoulders are a massive difference as well. The shoulders make a huge difference to the silhouette of these. I think that's the big. I think I'd argue that's probably one of the biggest changes, but it's it's something that stands out quite heavily. So there isn't just that guy. We have a few different examples here as well. I have to admit the. Uh, the one in black armor and the one in white armor, I quite like the look of those. Those are cool color schemes for this for this look. Yeah, I, I I really like I really like this change they've made, and there is still little hints of kind of more more uh, decorative stuff. Now you can clearly see she's got that kind of lion shoulder pad, but even then, it's not big. It's not like obtrusive. Just a super interesting change. I'd love to know why they decided to, like, fairly, I'd argue fairly significantly alter the look of the Stormcast, given that, like, Age of Sigmar is not an old game. It's not an old game. And, like, by proxy, the Stormcast are not that old. But, yeah, there's been there's been a definite, a definite shift here. We also have, as well, Annihilators, which are a new generation of Paladin, Built like a granite column. Yeah, I can I can see that. That hammer, by the way, looks nasty as anything. That looks like it would absolutely wipe you out. It's a solid hammer. Got the return of the uh, of the lion chest piece on this guy as well. Again, though, I feel like this guy is that bit simpler than like than like these guys, like the uh, the the paladin retributors. When you look at the amount that's going on on their armor, even on the hammers themselves, there's just there's just a gap there. Yeah, he does have a fair bit of ornamentation compared to uh, the Vindicta. Like he's got the big lion chest piece. He's got a bit more kind of uh, like a few more symbols on the shoulder pads, and he does still have that kind of circular symbol on either side of the chest. But it's nowhere near as pronounced as these guys. They have like, so much more in the way of, like, carvings and kind of embossed areas. The helms are, like, super spiky. They've got the packs on the back of the, like, that you can see sticking out above the head there that add a load of extra detail, and this just doesn't have that. Same thing with the cloth down the front. It's just simpler overall, I think. Maybe they just decided that stuff like this is great, but it's not great for beginners, and so let's make it a bit smoother and a bit easier to approach. I don't know, but I just wasn't expecting to see like a partial Stormcast redesign out of this. Now, as they say, what sort of threat would such advanced Stormcast Eternals be preparing to take on? From what I've been reading, right, a lot of people seem to think it's fi Fimir? Fimir? I don't know how to pronounce it necessarily. Um, there was a model for those that Forge World sold, but it's now disappeared. They were supposed to be in the new hero quest, but then they were pulled from that. And uh, apparently they they favour kind of swampy, boggy fens and the like. And I uh, can't help but notice that she is standing on something that uh, appears to be in a swampy kind of fen area. They have all mist around them all the time. Like, th this... Like, that isn't, like, any chaos rune or anything. I don't think it looks anything necessarily like the Lizard... Well, maybe it does look a bit like the Lizard Men stuff. I'm not sure. But, like, the overall style of that base. They're said to, be like, live in the ruins of their old civilization. You've got, like, a ruined section of stair. You've got, like, horrible swampy boggy bits kind of drooping down off decaying wood and the like. And apparently they have the destruction keyword, which... I don't know. It, could, it feels like it could be, could could be likely, could be. That is something that I'm gonna have to read up on though, because I don't have a huge grasp onto exactly what they are. Only that a lot of people I know are very excited about the prospect of it. So yeah, but yeah, that's what the uh, mystery day was. Uh, not really all that surprising, to be honest. But the question is, what did you think? What do you think of these new Stormcast? Like them? Don't like them? Think the old ones look better? Think the new ones look better? Got any kind of uh, wild guesses as to why they decided to do a bit of a a bit of a redesign? 
so like relatively early on in the just existence of that entire system let me know what you think in the comments down below in the meantime feel free to click all the things patreon video subscribe all that stuff click it if you like don't click it if you don't want to and as always there is an affiliate link in the description for element games which you can use to support the channel if you would like i leave it in your capable hands thank you very much for watching i'll see you next time